Yes. On, on, on most insects, you should make at least an attempt to spread the legs. Um, in an insect, especially an insect you don't know, we don't know what part of the body is going to be diagnostic for good identification of the insect. So if I need to see his belly button, which he doesn't really have, and the legs are all folded up like this, I'm going to have a terrible time looking at his stomach area to identify anything. So spread the insect out so you can see the feet, you can see the six legs, and you can see the bottom of the insect at least partially. How do I do that? Find a convenient spot that you can park him for a long time on the styrofoam. Before you push him the needle all the way down, start to spread the legs out. Sometimes they will spread easily. Sometimes they will spread with difficulty. Oh, uh, something that you should probably mention would be that if you, when you're spreading the legs, sometimes they get caught on the styrofoam. Yeah. Oh, so, right. Sometimes. When it dries, you try and pull it out, and the leg will come right off. Yes. If the insect is been stored too long in the refrigerator, if a claw catches the styrofoam, it may simply fall apart, break off. If the insect is too dry, if a claw catches a styrofoam, it may well break off again before the leg will extend. So it's best to do this when the insect is rather fresh. Uh, the same day you killed it would be usually the easiest. Not always right after you killed it. So after you gas it, you might let it sit one hour, two hours, that should be the ideal time to do the spreading. You will also notice on this specimen the leg is here, but the foot is missing. Fairly common in insects, especially certain species of insects, commonly will lose a foot or part of a foot. Don't know the reason why. Is that the second? I've noticed it especially in grasshoppers. Is that the second leg? The second leg, the yeah. foot. So I've seen it in grasshoppers. Uh, there is a species of fly on the campus that half the flies have lost a foot. But most other flies, no. Why the difference? I have no idea. So what I'm going to do now is push the insect down I describe it as pushing his stomach or his belly button against the styrofoam, whereas the legs are not under him. I sure I get the correct height on the pin by using my scientific stick. Everything looks good there. Now I start taking the legs and spread them out, not so much to the side, but more forward and backward. The two, two front, front pairs go to the forward, right? Or just the, the front pair goes forward? Um, typically, the front pair of legs goes forward, and, and the second and third pair of legs go backwards. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that if the first four legs are more convenient for forward, put them forward. If they're more, uh, the second pair of legs can either go forward or backwards. With your pins, hold the insect in the position you want him to be permanently as he dries. The exact position of the insect should, if you're, if that's important, should be checked the second day in case the insect moved. The antenna, if they're big enough to see and move, should also be put in a position where they're quite visible. For many insects, the number of joints of the antenna will need to be counted to do a true identification. 
And if you can't see them with a microscope, you will not be able to uh, tell the difference between male and female or identify some of the species. It is very common to use 20 or 30 needles to hold an insect in a proper position. Sometimes they can be done with two or three. Many times it takes 10 to 15, occasionally 20 or more. Like on the butterflies. Oh, if you're going to spread the wings, which we'll do some other day, uh, it could easily take 30 pins or more. If you were to spread the wings, would you lie this insect would, on its back I first, would either or? put it on its back or I would have a groove in the uh, styrofoam. Okay. Both ways work. It depends on which technique you are more familiar with. Oh, no. And then... Uh, And then, uh, so if you if you were to spread the wings, uh, you would uh, have it on its back, uh, position the wings, and would you, yeah, you would also position the legs, right? You would tuck I would, the legs close to the body, right? And you wouldn't, obviously, you wouldn't spread it out like I this, would, spread them out like this. Yeah, it's, it would be kind of a compromise, but the legs need to be put in the position so they don't bother anything else, right. such as where any identification pack, tag is placed, uh, how close other insects can be, uh, how easy it will be to identify the number of joints in the tarsus, in the foot, right. from wherever you have it. Okay. Uh, you should be able to see the claws. Does it have a single claw? Does it have a double claw? Is there a pad between the two claws? Uh, a lot of things that you're not familiar with, you're not sure of at first, so your best strategy is to simply spread it out, make it look ferocious, make it look interesting. Put it in a position where you can see all the different parts of the body. This is, a, this is, um, I'm gonna, what I did here was move the leg out so I could see the color pattern on the inside of the leg. We're pretty well done with this specimen. All right. Well, thank you.